Hey everybody, this is insight number two, which will drop on a Wednesday, in New Zealand at least, because um, there's only three this week. So I'll, I'll drop Monday, Wednesday, Friday for New Zealanders. Sorry for everyone else around the world, you're just going to have to figure out where you fall on that. There you go. There are three this week, this is the second one. So we're in Luke 10. Now this is another wonderful parable that you're probably familiar with, the Good Samaritan. It's pretty cool. Um, so let's have a read of it. It's in verses 25 through 37 specifically. Um, so this is after Jesus has been teaching about all sorts of things, about um, the 70s that come up. And I think that's covered in the Come Follow Me manual a bit about what 70s are and why we have them. But I figured that was more of a history educational thing rather than an uplifting insight. So go read that. Learn about that if you don't know about that. Um, and, um, like I've he I heard someone last night and I was talking to them and or yesterday. And they were saying, you know, when they first joined the church, they didn't really get what all the leaders were and, and why they were there and what even general conference was because it was so foreignly new to them. Uh, and now some 30 years later, they couldn't live without it. They think it's amazing. So if you haven't grown up with it, it is something that's a bit different. But you can see here in Luke 10 that there were 70s and there was that same structure that exists today in our church. Uh, church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints exists now. Same structure as existed in Christchurch then. Um which kind of really does set it apart from other churches. Yeah, so it talks about all of that there. But then he gives, um, so there's his teaching and other people can hear. So in 25, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. So like, you know, come on, let's, let's, let's hammer it out here. I'm going to give you a hairy one to deal with and uh, see how you respond. It's like, well, we all know that that doesn't work with Christ because he's super smart. So, um, he says, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Like, you know, ah, ha, ha, do I have to pay you money? Do I have to stand on my head for two hours? Like, if, if you're talking about this eternal life thing and it's that great, what do I have to do to inherit it? Come on, spell it out, because, you know. Um, and he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And... This lawyer says, and the answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Now that's part of the Ten Commandments, right? This is part of the law of Moses. This is part of that existing law that was already there. They knew this. They were familiar with this. Um, and then, willing to justify himself, he's trying to like, you know, really get at Jesus here, uh, says unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Like, who's my neighbor? Who am I supposed to be loving as myself, you know, as that people that do good? Are they my neighbours? The people I choose to hang out with, are they my neighbours? He's like trying to specify it down so that he can say, oh, I'm really good to the 10 people I'm friends with, so therefore I'm going to inherit eternal life. But Christ has goes on to really explain it here and gives that parable of the Good Samaritan, which we all know where there's a man travelling on the road to Jericho. Now, the road to Jericho is a nasty place to get mobbed. It is in the middle of nowhere. It's a really rough road. Um, something you wouldn't survive if you got mobbed on. And he gets mobbed, robbed. Um, yeah, sad. And it says there that a priest came by, passed on the other side, like totally ignored him, like, oh, that's nobody I have to care about. Don't need to know about him. A Levite who came by looked at them and went, nah, too hard. Now, these are the two people that really should have done something. These were the two people that were charged with looking after the people of Jerusalem. The, the, these are people of, um, like, this was their job, and they literally didn't do it. But then there comes a Samaritan. Now, the, the purpose of a Samaritan is that while they're a break-off from the Jewish people, they were in great contention over land and way of living and the Jewish people looked down on them. The Samaritans didn't like the Jewish. It just, it was just ugly. But the certain Samaritan, he journeyed, he, he found this young man or man and he took him and, and had all those things to fix him up and bound him up and then he put him on his um, beast and took him to the inn that was closest and paid the innkeeper, which he must have known the innkeeper um, I mean, this is a parable, so it's a story, but in this, it would indicate that you would know that innkeeper because the innkeeper was trusting the Samaritan, saying that, look, if it costs more to look after him, I'll pay it when I come back. And then Jesus says um, to this lawyer and the people there in verse 36, which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, 
he that shewed mercy on, on him. And then Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. So that was teaching this lawyer that actually your neighbor is everybody. Everyone. Not just the person who lives next door to you. Not just the people in your circle of influence or your actual neighbors you live next to. Not the people you go to church with or the people that you work with. It is everybody. It is everyone. And it's just a beautiful thing. So, take care of him. I love that. And I just, I thought this was really cool. Was just like, you know, loving the Lord with all thine heart and your neighbor is yourself. Because really, what is that for us in this day and age? Because it's not likely that we're going to travel a road with oils and bandages, although most of us have first aid kits in the car. But it's not something that we really see people beating up on the side of the street. Well, at least not New Zealand, thank goodness. I mean, maybe some places of the world you would. But not here. Occasionally, and I have stopped and helped um, a young kid who came off a scooter, washed his knee out, and he had like a big gash here that was bleeding, and we, we held that down. Um, and... He couldn't remember his mum's phone number, but we called the ambulance anyway, and they were able to, through their records, find his pet, his mother, and she came and was very grateful. But, you know, like, there's no way I wouldn't have stopped to help that kid. And yet in some countries I know that it's really dangerous to stop. When we were in Bali even years ago, 1994, when I was travelling there, and we saw someone on the side of the road that had obviously been injured um, being hit by a car or something was crossing the road and was struggling to do anything. Um, and there's not really cell phones that you can use back then. And our, our, literally our taxi driver said, you know, I said, oh, we need to stop and help. And, and he said, no, you don't, because as soon as you do, the police are going to think you're involved and you will possibly end up in prison. And I thought, oh, I must be joking and just didn't want to stop. And I found out later, no, that's actually a legit thing. And I'm like, what a sad country that is. What a harsh thing that is. And how grateful I am to live in a country where, for the most part, People here genuinely will help you. Even if they've never met you, they will offer you a place to stay, food to eat, clothing, a ride. And that's just how we are. Whether, whether you're churchy or not, it doesn't matter here. And I'm really grateful for that. I know that's not something that happens in, in a good portion of the world, which is sad. And we can change that. We can be have our own in and be that innkeeper to bring that in. So in this parable, we read of someone mugged and beaten, left for dead, that a priest and Levite passed by. The people that were actually, that was their job, as I said, to go and, and like help those other people. Samaritan coming um, to his aid, he had compassion. Taking care of, his, of this wounded man shows how we, truly, um, how we are truly charitable. Not because we will be rewarded, honoured or gain fame. Um, we help others like this because we love Christ. And that's the point of it. Um, this way of being is how we inherit life eternal, is loving others as much as we love Christ. So if you're not loving others so much, then probably work on loving Christ and you will naturally start loving others more. It just works. Um, and yeah, then we get to love ourselves. And I think of all of it, that's the hardest point. When they say love your neighbor as thyself, I'm like... If I loved other people like I love myself, I probably wouldn't treat them very nicely a lot of the time. So it's like, it's a good reminder to we've got to have kindness on ourselves and love on ourselves. Um, you know, like love the things about us that maybe no one else likes and just embrace that as being part of us. Like I don't like my thinning hair and the way you can see through my fringe in this light, which is probably why I keep playing with it. But you know, it's me. It's what I've got. I would love a lot of things to be different, but it's not. So I need to learn to love me. My talents that I've got, the things I can't do, the things I can do, embrace them more and do them more often. Um, and just be okay with all of that. It's not easy. It's a learning process, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, we can create our own inn, a place of rescue, respite and care, which is definitely what I've tried very hard to make my home be. And I've had many people say they felt that being here and visiting here and... They'll come here for that. Oh, I have neighbours that have just moved in. The, the girls next door, lovely girls there. Um, she was in here like two weeks and she cut herself with a, with a knife and they didn't have any band-aids or anything and she just knocked on the door with this bleeding finger. It wasn't like, you know, stitches, needing stitches or anything. She literally just needed some antiseptic cream and some band-aids um, and asked, you know, can I, have you got any? We don't have any. I'm like, yeah, of course we do. Um, and being able to just do simple things like that, it's its not grand, huge gestures. And I don't do it because 
I want a reward or I want to thank you or I'm looking for an end of year Christmas bonus. No, not at all. I do it because I love Christ. And in loving Christ, I love people more. I'm more open to help others because of my love for Christ. Um, and I can see them the way he sees them as these beautiful souls. And that's a huge blessing to have. So I really encourage you to like get into that place if you're not feeling it. Now, Alda Holland, he said, if we love God enough to try to be fully faithful to him, which is what we're trying to do, right? He will give us the ability, the capacity, the will, and the way to love our neighbor and ourselves. And that's why I really like that from Alda Holland. So if we love God enough to try, that's it. We just got to love him enough to try to be fully faithful to him. We're not going to be perfect at it, and it's not all going to work out fantastically well, but we've got to try. Um... In the end, it will work out fantastically well. But this life is a time for learning, and it's not going to be easy. So there you go. But he will give us the ability, the capacity, the will, and the way to love our neighbor and ourselves. And I know that's true, because I certainly love myself now a whole lot more than I did when I was younger, even though I was way hotter when I was younger. Physically, looked way better. But I actually love myself as a person a whole lot more now. I'm more accepting of who I am, the things, the the mental illnesses I have, I'm more accepting of them. I'm no longer fighting of them. And I had to do a lot of work to get into that space. It's not something that just happens, but it's something you can work on a little bit every day. So I challenge you to that because I know it will bring goodness to your life. It will help you to love yourself more. Love Christ first, you'll love others, and then you'll learn to love yourself more. It's good, right? Okay, hang around. We're going to look at Mary and Martha. I'll see you there.